All right, chapter seven, measuring and evaluating human energy generating capacities during exercise. We're gonna compare and contrast concepts of measurement, evaluation, and prediction. Explain the specificity and generality applied to exercise performance and physiological function. Describe the procedures to administer two practical field tests to evaluate power output capacities of intermuscular high energy phosphates. Describe a commonly used test to evaluate the power output capacity of glycolysis. Explain the differences between direct and indirect calorimetry. Explain the differences between open and closed circuit spirometry. Describe the different measurement systems used in open circuit spirometry. Define the term respiratory quotient, RQ, including its use and importance. Explain the factors that influence RQ and the respiratory exchange ratio. Define the maximal oxygen uptake or VO2 max, including its physiological significance. Define the graded exercise stress test. List the criteria that indicate when a person reaches true VO2 max and VO2 peak during a graded exercise test. Outline three commonly used treadmill protocols to assess VO2 max. Explain how each of the following affects VO2 max. Mode of exercise, heredity, state of training, gender, body composition, and age. Describe the procedures to administer a submaximal walking field test to predict VO2 max. Outline the procedure to administer a step test to, to predict VO2 max. List three assumptions when, predict, when predicting VO2 max and some maximal uh, exercise heart rate. Measurement evaluation and prediction. So measurement takes place when a score is attached to a performance, okay? So quantitative score, you have, you measure that, okay, based on a performance. Evaluation, that's just an example. Evaluation involves interpretation of those test scores. Uh, measuring represents an objective, non-judgmental process. It should, okay? It should be objective, non-judgmental. Evaluating re uh, requires that judgments be made. So you measure something and then you evaluate it based on what has been measured. Those are different things. And prediction is a process whereby test scores estimate or predict another function or attribute from the same individual. So based on what you've seen, you predict something that's coming. The strength of any prediction comes from the degree of relationship between the test score or test scores and the estimated function. Individual differences and in specificity. The concepts of individual differences and specificity help explain differences in capacity for anaerobic and aerobic power. Uh, individual differences refer to real differences among individuals. So these are like genetic differences and things like that. Those are real differences amongst different individuals, gender, you know. And these, these contrast to variations in physiological responses that characterize the individual. So there are physiological responses that are, those are different than the genetics that someone is uh, predisposed to. How someone responds to uh, exercise and things of that nature. Specificity says that the effects of systematic exer uh, exercise training remain highly specific to, for neurological, physiological, and metabolic responses. So specificity means that you're, when, when it comes to implementing, let's say, some type of intervention, a training regimen that's put into place, let's say you're doing three to four sets of eight to 12 reps of some type of, let's say, bench press, okay? That's completely different than doing three to four sets of 20 to 25 reps of bench press, okay? So, and... Also, specificity talks, that, that's one example. Another is, let's say you're doing certain types of exercise training in regards to what an individual needs to be doing afterward. So there's exercise prescription and things of that nature. And 
when you have those things take place, these different types of neurological, physiological, metabolic responses take place within those interventions. Uh, assessing at, uh, anaerobic power, two general approaches to assess the anaerobic power and capacity of responses individuals. Uh, major changes in ATP and phosphocreatine levels metabolized or lactate produced from anaerobic metabolism. And quantifying the amount of external work performed or power generated during short dura duration intense activity. In regards to, let's see here. Okay, so performance tests for anaerobic power. First of all, power is uh, different than strength, okay? Because strength is, there is no time component in the power formula. So there is, excuse me, a time component. So you have, strength is basically just force times distance, okay? You have a force, there's a distance it travels, that is work. When you do divide force times distance by time, that is power, okay? So it's basically, it's time rate of doing work, okay? That's what power is. Uh, it's measured in watts, okay? And typically, so max tests for one to 10 seconds reflect energy transfer to the immediate energy system so what would that be? That would be ATP, phosphocreatine, right? Maximal tests of longer duration reflect utilization of the slow glycolytic system, bioenergetic system. Okay. So if it's more than 10 seconds, you know, we said creatine phosphate can be like up to around 12. So after that, you know, you have more than 12, you're talking about that glycolytic up to about three minutes and switches over to aerobic. But so you have the types of in, uh, immediate energy power tests is jumping power tests, sprint running or cycling, shuttle runs, arm crank, sim, uh, simulated, stair climbing, rowing, and skiing. Physiological indicators, a short-term energy system. You have blood lactate levels. So considerable blood lactate accumulation accumulates from glycolytic energy pathway activating Activation in the mac in maximal exercise. So blood lactate accumulates, okay? Estab establishing blood lactate levels reflects the capacity of the short-term energy system. Okay, because as it goes up, at some point it needs to be removed through breathing oxygen, okay? <clears throat> Glycolytic de glycogen depletion, because the short-term energy system de uh, larger deposits depends on glycogen stored in the specific muscle activated by exercise, the pattern of glycogen depletion in these muscles provides an indication of the contribution of glycolysis to exercise, okay, which is the breakdown of glucose. Or glycogen in the muscles, either one. And that's why uh, we talk about energy sources and how they're used in regards to physical activity. Uh, that's why it's necessary to eat a proper diet and things of that nature as well because you only have so much muscle glycogen. Performance tests of glycolytic power, activities that require substantial activation of short-term energy, system demand maximal work up to three minutes or longer in some individuals. Considered within the framework of exercise specificity, the performance test must be similar to the activity or sport which energy capacity is evaluated. So here's one of the things it talks about, similar to activity or sport which energy capacity is evaluated. If you're evaluating something, okay, and you're, and it has nothing to do with the sport that's basically being played or the competition that's going to take place, it really doesn't make sense other than for the sake of doing the analysis for it to take place because it really doesn't parallel. It's not analogous to what's going to be taking place in that sport. So, but so here's here's the thing with the cycle ergoma, uh, ergometer er, ergometer excuse me cycle ergometer test catch and Wingate. Uh, this is on page one ninety nine, 
it's the Wingate test is a uh, test of anaerobic power. It involves 30 seconds of super maximal effort on either an arm crank, an arm crank, or leg cycle ergometer. Okay, arm crank is basically your arms are cranking, cranking, cranking on this wheel, and, or a leg cycle ergometer. 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, all out running tests from 200 to 800 meters. They say 200 to 800 meters because that's, if you think about, it's up to three minutes, right? So it's a, it's still, you're still in that glyco, glycogen system, that lactic acid system. And then sports specific run tests, okay, will determine your glycolytic power, okay? Short term glycolytic power. The catch test is an all out stationary cycling of short duration estimated, estimated that, as, that estimates the power of anaerobic energy systems. That's what the catch system is, okay? Uh, there's a stationary bike with frictional resistance against a flywheel preset at a high load, and the people turn as many revolutions as possible within 40 seconds. So it's similar than like the wind gate if you're using the wind gate that has the leg. Uh, cycle ergometer factors affecting anaerobic exercise performance specific training H have individuals been trained in specific exercises to then be measured in a performance based setting so if you're running three miles a day you are three, five, three to five miles, let's say, and you're not dealing with the anaerobic system. You're not doing the sprints, okay, each day. When you go to do a performance, your performance will is not going to be as great if you're not training specifically for what you're going to be measured on in some type of test, whether it be a performance-based test at the end of a certain intervention of activity whether it be a competition. So that has to be noted that, that the way you train has everything to do with how you're going to perform within that test that you're training for. Um, it makes sense. However, it's, it's not often, it, a lot of times things are not done in that way. People think, well, we're going to run people, run people, run people. And that's great if you're going to be a distance runner, cross country runner. But if you're going to run people, run people, run people, and then basically do sprints, Major someone in sprints, that doesn't really make a lot of sense from a training protocol standpoint. Uh, buffering of uh, acid metabolites. If you can't get rid of the hydrogen ions that basically uh, develop, if you can't get rid of those quickly, you can't buffer those, you're going to have problems. You're going to have metabolic acidosis. It causes cramping and things of that nature and then motivation so psychologically that's something that also has to do with anaerobic exercise performance how psychologically ready are you for certain things uh, we talked about that sodium bicarbonate previously, and this is benefits of an uh, enhanced alkaline reserve, page 201. And what this does is if you drink the sodium bicarbonate before an aerobic effort, the effect is accompanied by high, higher blood lactate and extracellular uh, hydrogen ion concentrations with in, in, uh, indicate increased aerobic energy contribution. So, this has actually been shown, the sodium bicarbonate, uh, to temporarily but significantly enhance short-term intense performance. We said that based on like one rep max type of thing. Okay. Measuring and evaluating the aerobic system, direct calorimetry. Uh, again, the book, you need to refer to the book. The book is a great resource. I've read this book like at least two times, three times straight through, and it's just a great, you know, I've taken my time by doing it, obviously, it takes weeks, but um, 
you have something here on page uh, 202. It talks about the, the direct calorimetry and indirect calorimetry. Well, we remember talking about the bomb calorimeter, basically exploded food, and it told you the energy value. Um, so another direct calorimeter is assessing human energy metabolism by measuring heat, product, heat production similar to the method for determining the heat values of the food in the bomb calorimeter. So what happens is, it's interesting stuff. Page 203, if you look at seven, uh, figure 7.7, 7. 7. 7, you have a human calorimeter directly measuring the body rate of energy metabolism or heat production. In the Atwater Rosa calorimeter, a thin sheet of copper line in copper lines the interior wall to which heat exchanges heat exchangers attach overhead and through which cold water passes the water cold the water cold to uh, 35.6 degrees uh, Fahrenheit moves at a high flow rate absorbing the heat radiated from the subject during the exercise as the as the subject rests warmer water flows at a slower rate the original bicycle ergometer shown in the schematic the real the uh, in the original bicycle ergometer shown in the schematic, the rear wheel, the rear wheel con uh, contacts the shaft of a generator that powers a light bulb. In later versions of ergometers, copper composed part of the real, rear wheel. The, the wheel rotated through the field of an electromagnet to produce an electric current for determining power output. It's pretty interesting. This deals when then with like the, um, you know, uh, that some of the elegant calorimeter experiments relating to energy input to energy expenditure, these successfully uh, are verified with the law of conservation of energy and validated the relationship between direct and indirect calorimetry. So here it is. I was talking about it. Figure 7-7. Seven, seven. There it is. Okay, you also, so you also have... Um, so direct calorimetry uh, continued is here. And then you have this. Also, you have um, indirect, which is closed circuit spirometry and open circuit spirometry. Clo uh, the, the, there's an indirect but accurate estimate of energy expenditure that can be obtained in closed circuit and open circuit. Closed circuit is a... a, a Unsuitable for use during exercise where subject movement is required in large volumes of air exchange because you're breathing into figure 7.8 closed circuit method spirometer. It's pre-filled with 100% oxygen. Basically, you breathe into it. The carbon dioxide is uh, absorbed. There's a soda lime canister of potassium hydroxide that's placed in the uh, breathing circuit that absorbs a person's carbon dioxide. So then the oxygen goes through and the individual breathes the oxygen again and they breathe, then they're able to, to push out, breathe out the carbon dioxide. It's a continual thing. That's why it's called closed circuit because there isn't any outside. Um, there, the person rebreathes only the gas in the chamber without our outside air entering the system. But the, the negative is, is that, you know, is subject movement's not can't happen during this. Open circuit spirometry is a bag technique, portable spirometry, and computerized instrumentation. Okay, these are examples. Those are bag technique, portable, and computerized. Open circuit uh, represents the most widely used technique to measure oxygen uptake during physical activity. Uh, subject inhales ambient air with constant composition of 20% oxygen, 0 0.03, uh, well it's really 20.93% oxygen, point 0 0.3 carbon dioxide and 79.04 percent uh, nitrogen because um, ambient air, our, our air anyways, contains a, a, a high degree of nitrogen actually. Okay. So the analysis of two factors, um, it's a different, it measures the difference in volume percent oxygen and the percent carbon dioxide exp uh, expired air compared with the inspired ambient air indirectly reflects the ongoing energy metabolism, uh, their metabolic process. So the analysis of two factors, the volume of inspired and expired air breathed during a specific time period and composition of the expired air always, or excuse me, allows computation 
of oxygen uptake. Okay. So what's the comp composition of that expired air? And here's um, an example right here of the uh, closed circuit. See that? You have that right here. Let me use my mouse here. You have that canister there of the acetylene canister of potassium hydroxide that absorbs that carbon dioxide. So the oxygen is there and it goes, breathes back in and push. Yeah, okay. And, may, and, this, and this measures, uh, uh, you know, the resting energy expenditure. Here's the bag technique. Uh, figured 7.9 oxygen uptake measurement by open circuit spirometry bag technique during station stationary cycle ergometer exercise. So, a uh, person rides a stationary bike, bicycle ergometer wearing headgear, two way high velocity, low resistance breathing valve. Ambient air passes through one side of the valve, exits through the other. Expired air passes into either a large canvas or plastic bag or rubber meter meteorological. Uh, balloons or directly through the meter that measures gas flow to quantify air volume. An aliquot of expired air is analyzed for its oxygen and carbon dioxide composition with subsequent calculations of VO2 and calorie caloric expenditure. And here's the uh, portable spirometry. Doubly labeled water technique. This is on page uh, 206 and this talks about uh, Few studies routinely use this method because of the expense in using doubly labeled water and the need for sophisticated measurement equipment. Okay, this was developed in the 50s. Um, what it is is, is the, the the individual consumes a quantity of water with a known concentration of heavy non-radioactive forms of uh, stable isotopes for heavy hydrogen uh, and oxygen. Hence the uh, term doubly labeled water. The isotopes distribute through all bodily fluids. Labeled hydrogen leaves the body as water and sweat, urine, and pulmonary water vapor. And labeled uh, oxygen exits as both water and carbon dioxide. Uh, produced during micronutrient oxidation and energy metabolism. So this is basically the water and carbon dioxide produced during micro or excuse me, macronutrient oxidation. You're talking about carbs, lipids, and protein, proteins. And that's what where you're getting that uh, water and carbon dioxide that's, that's being measured, okay? Differences between the two isotope elimination rates determined by an isotope ratio mass spectrometer relative to the body's normal background levels estimate total CO2 production during measurement period. Oxygen uptake is estimated based on CO2 production and assumed or measured respiratory quotient or value of 0.85. So, respiratory quotient uh, is CO2 produced divided by oxygen consumed. This helps approximate the nutritional mixture catabolized for energy during uh, rest and aerobic exercise. The RQ for carbohydrates is 1. Lipids is 0.7, but can range between 0.69 and 0.73. depends on the oxidized fatty acids carbon chain length, because you remember, a glycerol and three fatty acids is what a lipid is, okay? So it depends on the fatty acids carbon chain length. The res respiratory quotient for protein, 0.82, and respiratory qu quotient for mixed diet. So obviously it's, and that's 0.82 for metabolism mixture of 40% carb, 60% fat. Of all, uh, all the oxygen consumed in carbohydrate combustion oxidizes, carbon in the carbon in the carbohydrate molecule to carbon dioxide this occurs before the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen atoms and carbohydrates always equals always exists in the same 2 to 1 ratio okay and they're talking about C6H12O6 
So H is 12 and O is 6. Okay, so gas, exchange, gas exchange during glucose oxidation, which is a carbohydrate, produces an equal number of CO2 molecules to O2 molecules consumed. Therefore, the respiratory quotient equals 1. Okay, because you have 6 CO2 divided by 6 O2 equals 1. And that comes from the formula, okay, of glucose. Respiratory exchange... Uh, ratio R reflects the pulmonary exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen under various physiological metabolic conditions. Does not fully mirror the macronutrient mixture catabolized for energy. Exhaustive, exhaustive exercise usually causes R to increase about one because buffering adds extra CO2 to expired air above the quantity normally released during cellular energy metabolism. Okay, because there's more CO2 in exhaustive exercise. So it's above one. So above one divided by one means it's about, you know, it ends up the rate. That's why the ratio changes. Max oxygen uptake. Okay. This represents the greatest amount of oxygen a person can use to produce ATP aerobically on a permanent basis. Finally, fundamentally measures exercise fizz and serves as a standard to compare performance estimates of aerobic capacity and uh, endurance fitness. Types of test, treadmill, walking or running, bench stepping, cycling, swimming. Okay, these are some of the tests that are used to measure this. Um, so re remember that. It, 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 we see that, and what does it mean? Okay, it's the greatest amount of oxygen a person can use to produce ATP aerobically on a permanent basis. So to continue to give energy, create energy, right, to be used. Right here, it's basically showing that um, maximal oxygen uptake for female and male Olympic caliber athletes differ in different sport categories compared to healthy sedentary subjects. Uh, it does show that male and female competitors in distance running, swimming, bicycling, rowing, and cross-country skiing have nearly twice their aerobic capacity as sedentary individuals. Okay. So it doesn't mean that VO2 max determines endurance capacity. Other factors at the muscle level, such as capillary density, enzymes, and muscle fiber types strongly influence capacity to sustain physical activity at high VO2 percentage. In essence, uh, VO2 max represents the fundamental measure in exercise physiology and serves as a standard to compare performance estimates of aerobic capacity and endurance fitness. Anything else here? Criteria for VO2 max, a loving off or peaking over uh, an oxygen uptake occurs, occurs during increased exercise intensity. So peak oxygen uptake is when max criterion is not met or local muscle fatigue rather than central circulatory dynamics limits test performance. This is a failure for oxygen uptake versus exercise intensity to increase by some value usually expected from previous observations with the particular test. If blood lactate levels that attain at least 70, 80%, 80, 70 or 80 milligram per 100 milliliters of blood or about 8 to 10 millimolar, okay? So this is criteria for the VO2 max. When does, it ha when does the peak oxygen uptake take place? Attainment of near age predicted max heart rate or an R in excess, excess of 1. So when they've reached their VO2 max, this is what they see in the blood. The blood lactate level of 70 to 80 milligram per 100 milliliter of blood. Okay. Or an attainment of near age predicted max heart rate. So max heart rate, there it is. So what's happening? Well, we go back to what it states is that greatest amount of oxygen a person can use to produce ATP aerobically on a permanent basis. So if they can't, if that's the max, then they cannot 
uh, produce ATP anymore. Okay. Factors affecting VO2 max. Exercise mode, reflect the quality, activated muscle mass, heredity, or genetics. Current estimates ascribe to 30% VO2 max, 50% heart max heart rate, 70% physical work, working capacity. Training state. Aerobic capacity and training improves 6 to 20%. Largest improvement occurs amongst most sedentary individuals. Gender, VO2 max for women is 15 to 30% below men. Body composition, differences in body mass explain roughly 70% of the differences in VO2 max. Okay, and we have age. Okay, so there's all these different variables. Changes in age and VO2 max relate to chronological age, yet limitations exist drawing inferences from cross-sectional studies of different age people. Okay. So, beyond 35, VO2 max declines at a nonlinear rate that accelerates after, after age 45 so that by age 60 it averages 11% below the values for 35 year old man and 15% below the 35 year old women okay so it does decline okay, over time VO2 prediction VO2 max predictions um, tests that predict VO2 max from sub maximal performances most popular use of walking and running performance um, the most popular use, okay, these predictions, most popular use, walking, wearing, performance, easily administered, can be used for large groups, no need for a formal lab setting, factors that contribute to fi uh, final VO2 max predicted score, body mass, body fatness, running economy, percentage of aerobic capacity, sustainable without blood like blood lactate buildup. So if you have a large body mass, Okay, it may affect negatively your VO2 max. And that's what it shows. Body fatness, more fatness negatively uh, affects VO2 max. You have running economy. If you have better economy, better gait, better flow when you run, it's going to affect it. It's going to increase it if you have your VO2 max, if you have a great running economy. Percentage of aerobic capacity sustainable without blood lactate buildup. If you have less blood lactate buildup over time, your VO2 max is going to, predicted VO2 max should go up. Heart rate predictions. Prediction tests utilize linear relationship between heart rate, oxygen uptake, various intensities, the light to moderate intense exercise falls within 10 to 20% of the person's actual VO2 max. So suitable for screening, classification, aerobic fitness. Limitations, linearity of the H, uh, 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 heart rate, VO2 max relationship. Or the oxygen the oxygen uptake relationship, should I say similar max heart rate rates for all subjects? Uh, these are limitations. Assume constant exercise economy, day-to-day -day variation in exercise heart rate. Uh, one thing about this is is that your VO2 max it, it gets you when you train your VO2 max basically, and it goes to this. Your VO2 max is able to, uh, you don't reach your, um, you, you have, it takes a longer time, okay? So if you have a stroke, the reason heart rate prediction is relative to the VO2 max is because you're more efficient in oxygen consumption, okay, with training. Reason being is that Cardiac output is stroke volume times heart rate, so your heart rate decreases once you get more aerobically uh, fit. Heart rate decreases because your stroke volume goes up. It goes up because the ejection fraction of blood, okay, per stroke is more efficient. So if something's pumping more blood per stroke, your heart rate can go down. So your heart doesn't have to work as hard because the muscle has become stronger. 
So if that takes place, then VO2 max, because one of the factors that affects VO2 max is the heart rate. So that means that your VO2 max is reached later because of the fact that uh, the, the heart rate has actually decreased when you've become more fit, okay, in a trained individual.